we don't want to play necessarily classic we crave for a good mmo okay let's see guys what we have here we have a uh, scotty j the devs tease phase two stuff new ways to get xp raid rises and more <laughs> Jeez, that was a weird dream. I didn't even know Torrens are that flexible. Wait, right. I need coffee and a good YouTube video to wake me up. Christ, it smells like a dwarf's armpit in here. So it's morning. We're having coffee and a good video to wake me up. Isn't that just perfect? <laughs> morning, Senyan. Alexa, find me a new season of Discovery video. Here's your video. Play how I play the game, as in, don't worry about. The oh no way! Not this guy. Oh my god! He thinks he knows it all, but can't parse higher than thirty. Wow. Someone really needs to sort this idiot out. Why does my voice sound like a voice actor from a low-budget <laughs> Korean MMO? If I can just work out how to build a teleporter to get to his world, I can sort him out. Let's hope this worked. See you on the other side. Don't know what that was. While we know sometimes we have to take what the devs say with a pinch of salt, there's been some little gems they put out there. And while you may think it's been a quiet week for Season of Discovery, from little to no news, you'd actually be wrong. You're probably just not looking in the right place anymore, which can be a little bit irritating. I mean, to check. So this is interesting here. We're excited to share them more about Phase 2 soon, including a sneak peek to the normal raid. But this one, Battleground matchmaking updates. Matchmaking. So they're doing something about the pre-made. So many different places just to find out what the devs are actually thinking. Starting every video when there's been some news or information from the devs like, Oh my god, guys, this is the biggest news ever. Yeah, it's getting a little bit old. So instead, I'll be completely honest right up front. Some of the things we're going to dive into now Morning, are Bucci. so significant to the future of how and what content we receive in Season of Discovery and even in other versions of the game. The information on its own without being broken down by me in understandable chunks could cause a complete meltdown in your brain because news of such magnitude can only be directly compared to the reaction of an audience here in Tenacious D performing Master Exploder. I should have just stuck with a, wow, this is the biggest news ever, shouldn't I? Yeah. There's several things to get through from what raid size Nomragon's going to be, how it's going to launch, or should I say open for the first time. Potentially new ways to get XP, and I don't mean the fastest way to 40 or anything like that. I mean an actual new way of getting XP completely. Potentially, if what the devs are teasing at is true. I think the new way of getting XP, it's the Strangleton event, but that new way of getting xp you have to get first to level 30 plus to be able to get xp well 25 to 30 should be really fast 30 to 40 leveling in strangle torn mm, that's really nice imagine th but that if that is pvp xp and then you get like uh xp from battlegrounds because they did uh cancel the ability to get the marks from uh the mail back to restore your mark so i think there's going to be more ways more than just one way to get xp from uh, tw 25 to 40. We're also going to take a look at some of the big crafted items coming in the next phase for each profession, Ooh. which we won't be focusing so much on the items themselves, but instead the materials that are going to be valuable. Yeah, because Strangle this might then give be you something to back. do over the next week or two, getting some of these materials from maybe fishing or farming in higher level zones. We're also going to look at the future of how content delivery is decided and why I'm not keen on what's happening right now. We're also going to have a look at how the numbers of Season of Discovery are progressing this late in the phase. I don't mean DPS wow. numbers. I mean numbers of active players. And I actually think that it's going to shock you when you get to see how these numbers have progressed since the video I put out looking at populations a couple of weeks ago. Now, the first piece of news we actually got a bit more inadvertently because actually telling us the size of Gnomeragon wasn't the intention of the post, which that will become clearer in a minute. But we now know it's a 10-player raid. Now, I okay, I, I don't know who came with the idea to delay no more. Why would you delay no more? I don't understand. To give people time to level from 25 to 40? That's literally done in one day, guys. I know many of us probably suspected it's going to be a 10-player raid because, well, Black Fathom Deeps was. But on the basis that before Season of Discovery launched, we was already told that the likelihood of level 60 raiding will still be 40-player raids. Raid sizes. I've heard it thrown around that you're actually sticking with 40, man, which I'll be honest with you, I don't like. I know many people do, but, you know, is there any any chance of different raid sizes at 60? I always want to say there's a chance, but there's nothing for us to promise in that, in that vein. You, you know, 
I, I've thought about this a lot personally and, and what kind of one of like, what is the quintessential difference between original WoW and like Burning Crusade or Wrath? And and having played through all of 2019, I started a guild at the beginning of 2019 Classic and it's still together. We're still at, we're rating. You know how those are classic developers? The quality of their cam, it's classic as well. <laughs> it looks like 2004 cam. <laughs> ICC now and everything. And... I will say that one of the things that's nice about 40 player rating is that not every single person has to be super, you know, you can take friends and family and stuff. Not everyone has to be the highest performing. Whereas we, you know, with the design of Burning Crusade and Wrath, you tend to kind of min max your roster a little bit more because you got to get the right buffs and you got to, you know, everyone really has to kind of do mechanics and do everything and it's just it's i think it's a little less social in general because of that it's it's rewarding in other ways and it's a lot more it's a lot easier to manage as a radio like for sure <laughs> but um so i think it, it, it also From it also classic. comes down to like how, how do we best spend our time too is like retrofitting like molten core to make it a 20 player raid is that a good use of our time i don't i i think as a developer i think i'd rather put that time in a more new original cool stuff so i, I don't know so uh we'll see uh there but Never say never. It had me at least thinking that they might ramp the sizes up a little bit. So BFD 10 man, maybe they'd put Gnomeregon up to 15 man and then scale up to the point where then when we're level 60, we're doing 40 player raiding. Because whilst I know you can amalgamate all of these 10 man raids together to make a 40 man at 60, if we continue doing 10 player raids on the way up, it's going to be a weird transition, especially for smaller guilds like my own, yeah. to be fair. Because there's no pressure on having to recruit more people because there is no larger scale raids at the moment. I think that transition period between level 50 raiding and then level 60 raiding might be a bit strange if it carries on like this. But in case you were wondering, and for me personally, I love the fact that it's going to be a 10 man. I hope everything's 10 man all the way to level 60. But then I would love to see 10 man molten core, guys. How would that feel, huh? But he does have a point, like if every phase is going to last like two months at, at minimum, and we're gonna do only 10 mans. Once you get to 60, what you're gonna do? You're gonna destroy your guild, you're gonna merge guilds, you're gonna start fart finding new farting. <laughs> Finding new people. I kind of like this 10 man meta for now, for Season of Discovery, right? But if we ever go back to Classic, I am keen of the 40 man rating. It's, you gather 40 people, you get the world buffs, you parse. It does have some sort of, I like that as well, to it. See at level 60 it not be 40 man. I would love to see 10 and 25 man personally, but who knows? That could be something that happens, but 10 and 25. the devs have already alluded to the fact that that probably won't be the case. So it was Agron nice. that actually put this tweet out, and the primary reason for him putting it out in the first place was to try and get some player feedback on how we feel the raid should actually launch. So should it be open straight away so you can rush to level 40, get in Nomragon and start clearing it? Or should there be a week delay? Now, I have brushed through a lot of replies, and I see a lot of people saying leave it as it is. A lot of exactly. people saying let's like delay it by a week so there's not that rush for... I don't understand why it even came to the question in the first place. Are people getting bored and they ask questions? Or oh, should we let one more BFD ID reset? What's the point? I mean, the, the idea is... No, but it's already not tested, right? Let it one week exactly from the first day because people will get to test it the first day and then the second wave of people will get to clear it normally. What if the first week it's bugged? There wasn't any PTR, there wasn't, there wasn't any beta for this raid. So if there has any bugs, we have to find them as soon as possible. A level in so no one feels like they're missing out on anything. This is completely taking away how I play the game as in don't worry about the fact that yes, I probably will no life launch and try and do it in one sitting, get to 40, and yes, I want to be raiding as quickly as possible, but at the same time, I don't really care whether I hit 40 and go straight into Nomragon, or I hit 40 and then have to wait a week. But I personally would just prefer it to be available at launch, and the reason for this is not a selfish one. It's purely because there's a lot of guilds that will want to rush and race and, you know, be the first guild to clear it, and that's fun. And that might not be fun for you, and it might not be fun for, for me even to see I'm not even level 40 yet and there's guilds clearing Nomragon, but that's how they want to play the game. So why delay it by a week and punish that group of people when you can just have it available at launch and it don't affect any of us anyway? Because like, let's face it, if we missed out on one reset, so you know, you've got all these guilds that are going in, the world, racing yeah. and getting it cleared in the first sort of 24, 30 hours, whatever, and you happen to miss that first reset, so they're getting an extra lockout's worth of loot over you, 
What difference does it really make? It's a leveling up dungeon. We're going to be level 40. It makes little to no difference. You've seen how many lockouts of BFD you've happened to get, you know, between phase one launching and now phase two coming. So it's not like you're going to get a lack of Gnome Ragon by having some of these top guilds that put loads and loads of effort in and loads of preparation into try and get in there and clear it first by getting one more lockout than you do. There are some alternatives, like you could make the first lockout last a whole week instead of only three days. That would then allow for those of us that are a bit slower not to actually lose out on that first lockout if you like but for me personally the fact is not everybody does need to be able to clear the content in the first lockout or even step foot in there in the first lockout some people might need some gear from the level 40 dungeons first before they can even go in and clear it so i don't really agree with the fact that we should be punishing the people that want to go in and they want to you know race for world first and be the one of the exactly. first or top 10 guilds even to clear Gnomeragon because that's what they find fun. Taking away from other people's fun to, I don't know, like make us feel like we're not missing out on something. Um, I'm not really a fan. Now, I did mention in the intro about the whole changing of the way that we get content and what content we actually get. And it really is alluding to some of these things that are going on on Twitter in particular. I can only speak for myself and I check Twitter occasionally. If, if I was to say once a week, that's probably exaggerating because it's not the place I expect to go and get information directly from the developers. Same. It should either be in the form of blue posts that are going on the official World of Warcraft forums or preferably on the Battle.net launcher. So while I love this open communication from the devs, like from people like Agrand, I feel like Twitter is starting to become a bit of a weird place for it to sit. And I know you're probably like, man, you're old, you know, like we're always on Twitter. Maybe you are, but me personally, it's not where I look for something like this ordinarily. I am having to do it more and more now. But asking for community feedback on something as important as when is the first raid going to launch, as in, is it going to be delayed by a week? You're missing out on lots and lots of feedback from people that don't use Twitter. And don't get me wrong, there'll be... And exactly, like Twitter, it's mostly used by um, people in the USA, I think. It's not that popular in Europe, for example. And asking for feedback might be better just to throw a random, like, um, you know how they do those, um, like, polls that you randomly get? Are you ready to play Cataclysm in the future? No! Yes, maybe. I use it sometimes. I mean, it's too much like drama there. Too much new America, I guess. People that don't use the forums, but at least the majority of guild discords and stuff like that will have sections set up where when there's a blue post, it pings discord so everybody can go and see it. And if it's on a blue post, Wowhead will pick up on it instantly. Whereas if it's a tweet, they might not pick up on it as quick. I just really like what Blizzard are doing at the moment in terms of getting feedback and seeing what people want. I'm just not really that keen on the format. Let me know in the comments if that's just a me problem or does it bother you a little bit that there's official sort of communications going out that actually affect season of discovery decision making from the devs and it's on Twitter. And this is a bit of a strange one, but it's something that I would absolutely love to see. So while Neither people were questioning Agrand and tagging him in posts about, you know, should we be allowing people to stack up 25 quests to hand in at launch and all of that, which I'm absolutely fine with, by the way. Again, I think the thing with 20, 20 stacked quests, I don't think it's bad. Like if people want to do it, if you want to put the work and questing and making 20 quests, it is something fun to do. It is content after all. Imagine if you stack the quest, 20 quests, and then you have something in your bag to give you like an edge on the launch. You already spent that time and then Blizzard goes, you, you, you know what? Like, nah, this is not going to work. Giving you something to do now. Getting Let people do whatever they want. To be able to get a few levels at launch. I don't see anything wrong with that. For any of you that have played more than just Season of Discovery, you'll know we've been doing that for years. It's just a common occurrence. You stacking up quests ready for when your XP bar appears again and you get a big chunk of XP. So I don't disagree that that should be a thing. So what Agron said in this message was, I'd maybe not make assumptions at this moment that that will be your only option. And what that was in reply to was the whole questing and stacking up quests or as soon as the game launches just going in and dungeon grinding all the way to level 40 so you don't really even see much of the outdoor world so it's as if he was alluding to there might be other ways to get experience now it's quite common practice in other games to be able to get experience from crafting there was even games as far back as star wars wow, galaxies where crafting. you could play the game in, in entirety and really enjoy it that. and you know, spend as much time on there as anybody else without even fighting anything, like completely non-combat ways of leveling and non-combat professions. And I know that's obviously in other games as well, but for anyone who's known me for a while, Star Wars Galaxies, that was my jam. So while straight away when you hear, oh, there might be other ways to get XP, you're thinking, hmm, there's a lot of PvP going on, aren't there? In Season of Discovery, big PvP scene at the moment, 
maybe we're going to start getting XP from Battlegrounds, which, don't get me wrong, that would be... Uh, to be honest, I mean, Ashen Village is not necessarily a PvP thingy. It's like more of a PvE event that you do for a rep. Maybe Strangletorn will be different. It'd be amazing, and actually that's something I would implement personally. But wouldn't it be cool if it was a bit further than that, and you did get XP based on what you was crafting, and you could get XP from Gathering, which we know XP from Gathering came in later on down the line anyway. But yeah, it was if just you get a XP little... XP from Gathering, people will save like a whole bank of materials, and they spam crafting, getting a couple of levels from spam crafting leveling professions. Imagine, not only that they will level profession, they would abandon the profession and re-level them again for XP. Ugh. Or like, mm, maybe, maybe this could be something that happens that piqued my interest, and I thought, well... I'll share it with you guys. What do you think in the comments? What would be a great addition that maybe we've never even seen in retail? How would you like guys to get XP? For example, one way of getting XP that I would like in um, in WoW is to farm in a specific area and to get uh, just a stone that starts a quest. And then that quest starts like kill 50 of these mobs, which are within your level, and you will gain that much XP. It would be like doubling it or uh, gather 10 iron nodes. A way that you could get XP where it wouldn't be faster than going out players. questing or doing dungeons or stuff like that. But it would just be maybe a fun way for you to get XP, like if you did enjoy professions, just as an example. And then I just wanted to touch on the current server population. And overall, looking at faction balance as well, because I've never, ever seen it Me look neither. so healthy. And I know on the PvP servers, this it's is the healthiest faction balance. But even on the PvE... And listen, wild growth is PvE. That's why you see that this imbalance. But all the PvP servers are within like 5% at max. Look, Crusader Strike EU, it's literally like... 50-50. And those are numbers that are uh, based on people that rated. The sample is high enough so we can know that it's with accuracy in terms of percentage in the game as well. So it is within 1% or maximum 5% difference. This is the healthiest alliance to horde ratio I've ever seen since playing World of Warcraft on so many servers. Servers, it's not really bad. There's still no 100% horde or 100% alliance. It's not only so people who rated. They have a stuff like armory. Servers which... I'm shocked at, actually. I expected to see PvE servers with this is the Horde PvE server, this is the Alliance PvE server, but that's not happened yet. But no. looking at this week on week, so from the 22nd of the 12th, which obviously was going to be not quite as busy as other times Let's because hoard. it was over the Christmas period, there was a total of 374,000 people raiding because this does look at passes. So it looks at how many people are physically logged on Warcraft logs during this period. Now you have to understand some people might not be raiding anymore because they have best in slot. Like my hunter doesn't need anything uh, from there. So once you, you got your best in slot, doesn't mean you don't play the game anymore. You could gold grind, but you don't log. This is numbers only from log. Period. So we went from 375k rounding up. And then after the new year, it was up to 464,000. Wow. It's now even outperforming that at 472,000. And the reason I think this is a big deal is because we're at the back end of the phase. This should be the time where it is literally the quietest. I know exactly. our guild is going not down. really doing a great deal because we're just waiting for phase two. And I know there's a lot of people out there. That this this probably... is weird. It's normal. The numbers should go down. Everyone is like, okay, I've done everything. It's going up. It's like... Mind-blowing. Maybe it's the bots, guys. Those are those 270,000 bots that Blizzard banned and uh, they logged now back in. I think that the numbers might be even higher than this. I really wish Blizzard would, like, um, release official numbers. Even back playing Wrath or maybe playing Retail or other games while they wait for Phase 2. So to see that it's actually still climbing, even though it's right at the end of a phase, just shows how much of a positive experience Season of Discovery has been. I know there's another way you could look at that and you could be, hang on, Scott, yeah, it's because... People have had more time to level more ults and raid on more ults. And don't get me wrong, that could... You know what I realized from... Um...
all of those launches from TBC, from Wrath of the Lich King, from Classic, from Hardcore, from uh, Season of Discovery and so on. We don't want to play necessarily Classic. We crave for a good MMO that doesn't have like pay to win. Everything that comes from the East, like Lost Ark and stuff like that with those massive shops and it's not good. So there is a hunger in the MMO community for a good MMO. And Season of Discovery, while it's something scuffed put together, it is new. I think we played a lot of Classic and Classic, it's always nice, but you can't just play play only classic you know what i mean definitely play a part to it but i also see a lot of people that were probably raiding on four or five characters before that might only just be raiding on one or two now so while it's not an exact science on what we can extrapolate from this it's still a really really good sign especially when you compare it to wrath of the lich king which absolutely just pains me to look at with only 238,000 people raiding. And then when you look at some of these faction balance, it just doesn't exist. And the next thing I wanted to touch on was professions, because WoW had put a, a brilliant post out showing all the real sort of sought after recipes that people are going to be wanting to craft either to, to actually use or control. Spiced chili crab, tender wolf steak, monster omelette, heavy codo stew, dragon bread chili, sage fish delight, sage fish delight. Consumable wise for raids. In the next phase now we all are assuming that we're going to be able to get to 225 in the next phase there's been other random numbers thrown around on podcasts and on different videos saying maybe they cap it at 200 maybe they cap it at 210 i've looked and i can see good reason for actually capping it slightly lower than 225 and that would purely come down to actually the recipes that gnomes are going to have access to at that level that everybody no just just remove the the racial from gnomes where they give them 15 engineering and that's it i mean if 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 they get like too many perks that are shouldn't be a or just don't don't even take the racial just don't make available engineering past 225 it's simple don't don't um, make it available don't cut from the profession man we had like professions in phase one we weren't even able to enchant stuff one stamina on the boots was the beast enchant come on what else isn't and on top of that if we was going to 150 at 25 then we know at level 40 we get 225 then at 50 you would assume it would be 300 now professions are done before the level 60 phase and if they want to add more items i don't know maybe it makes that a little bit more awkward so they could actually put it at let's say 200 and then 250 and then 300 like i have actually looked at some specific examples where recipes would make sense capping yeah. at lower than 225 but i just don't know if they're going to go to that much effort for the sake of you know 5 10 maybe 15 points of engineering or 15 points of tailoring or you know so my guess would be probably 225 but they might surprise us and do something different. But working off the basis of it being 225, you can have a look through this post and see some pretty good recipes that you're going to now be able to start using. Like being able to get 12 stamina food, which is going to be Oil pretty of big. Dragon's mm -hmm. Breath Chili, just for extra damage. Restorative potions that could be huge in PvP. Oil of Immolation, again from Alchemy, which actually does some half decent damage and people will be using. Starting to be able to get greater mana potions and things like that are going to be useful as well. But if you were to take Elixir of Agility, just as an example, because this is going to be one that a lot of people will be using because 15 Agility for your rogues, hunters, ferals, whatever. You can start looking at what they require, things like Strangle, Kelp and Goldthorn, and knowing that these are going to be in high demand. So being able to get these stocked up early and start getting rid of them as quick as possible before prices tank it's probably going to be worthwhile. You're also going to start being able to get half decent enchanting recipes now. We know enchants at 25 have been a little bit lackluster, but you're going to actually start getting things that give plus five. So like wow. five strength on braces or five Minor intellect speed. on braces. Five strength on gloves at 225, assuming Agility. we get to 225. So enchants actually start to become a lot more important as well now. Also going to get access to the new solid weight stones and solid sharpening stones. I would probably hazard a guess that we're going to see something similar in terms um, of we have extra Fury. hit from Gnomeragon like we did in BFD, because still, even at level 40, You're sitting getting on hit on gear is obviously extremely Wait, sparse. So I think we will Blood. see ways that that's actually assisted through the Gnomeragon raid, which... What do you get from King's Blood? What do you make with King's Blood? Because King's Blood was never like a valuable herb, was it? Over the next three or four days, I would say, we're going to start to see a lot more coming out. Because actually, again, another Twitter post... Nora Valletta did say that they're excited to share more about Phase 2 soon, including a sneak this is peek the one. at the new Gnomeragon raid. Matchmaking updates. There's not going to be, like, pre-mades anymore. You would qualify within, like, a specific rating to queue? Or would they make something like, you know what would be nice? Rated Battlegrounds too. Full form Val PvP event, Battleground matchmaking updates, 
and more. Battleground matchmaking updates is going to be interesting. Is there going to be solo queues? Well, he'd also put out a post about community wish list for runes for each class, which I'll put a link in the description below if you want to go and have a look at that. I was going to cover it, but I'll be honest with you, I'm going to be doing something... Let's see, at Hunter. Coordinated Assault. That's for melee hunters. Lock and load. With both explosive shot and chimera shot, marksman hunters are already well equipped for phase 2. A passive talent like lock and load would encourage an active playstyle combined with an effective. Hunters do not have focus, but mana and classic wow. Quite similar over the next couple of days anyway. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Great video from uh, Scotty J.